Um, hello, thanks for joining me today. I'm Charles, software engineer at Netflix, and I'm also a TyKV maintainer. So today I will share our experience of building a scalable and a reliable change data capture service for TyKV. So today's talk will cover several topics. Firstly, we will explore why we need to build a new CDC tool for TyKV. Then we will talk about how TyKV works internally. Um, though TyKV currently only support date synchronization from TyDB built on TyKV, the same principle and experience can be used by users wishing to sync data from any system built on TyKV to other systems. This is particularly relevant as syncing data from a distributed database like TyDB is often more challenging than from other systems. Once we have a better understanding of TyCDC internally, we will, we will cover the performance gains achieved after TyCDC version 6.5. We received a lot of feedback from the community last year, like concerns about performance and system reliability. So we put a lot of efforts and time to enhance the reliability and optimize the performance. First, let's talk about why we need TyCDC. What are some major use cases of TyCDC? There are two common scenarios where TyCDC can be particularly useful. The first one is incremental data synchronization for heterogeneous systems. This means that if, if you have multiple databases that need to be synchronized with one another, TyCDC can help ensure that all the data is up to date in real time. The second scenario is cross-region disaster recovery, which based on primary and secondary replication. This can be critical for business that rely on their data to operate. Compared to traditional database system, PyKV can hold much larger volume of data, which makes capturing change data for PyKV very challenging, as we want to ensure not only the high data syncing throughputs for a large volume of change, but also different level of data consistency. So compared to some other systems, what kinds of features do PyKV provide? First, Thai, uh, Thai, Thai CDC provides. So first, the Thai CDC supports low latency incremental data replication for various downstream. So that is to say you can use Thai CDC to replicate data from upstream database to Kafka using Kernel JSON, Avro, or Open Protocol. Second, Thai CDC support database and table filtering, which enable you to filter specific data based on your requirement. This feature helps reduce the amount of data transfer and makes the replication process more efficient. Third, TyCDC supports most operations through OpenAPI. This means that you can easily integrate TyCDC into your existing application without having to worry about compatibility issue. Last but not least, TyCDC supports bi-direction replication between TyKV cluster. This means that you can easily replicate data between two TyKV cluster making it easier to change your data across multiple clusters. Now, we have understand why we need tight CDC. Next, let's talk about the design goal and the challenges of building CDC service for TyKV. Our first objective is to ensure high availability. We understand that the critical natural of syncing data to downstream system for users, but accidents and disasters are inevitable. Therefore, we must guarantee that even in the event of system faults, the data syncing process will continue uninterrupted, and the CDC cluster will remain fully functional. The next goal is to achieve high throughput and low latency. As previously mentioned, users typically store vast amounts of data in upstream cluster, spread, spread across thousands of nodes. Consequently, a capable CDC servers should be able to concurrently sync data from multiple TyKV storage regions with original throughputs, with optimal throughputs. Our third goal is to ensure consistency and ordering. Unlike other systems, maintaining the consistency and order of events operated upon is crucial for TyKV, as many users are using TyKV as the backend storage for distributed system. Therefore, we intend to provide snapshot isolation and eventual consistency, eventual consistency to address this requirement effectively. However, all these goals are not easy to achieve, as we face many challenges at the same time. First, we need to capture the change data instantiously, as any delay can lead to large synchronization lag. 
Additionally, we must be aware of and able to catch up with the scheme revolution. As I mentioned before, many users using Thai CDC or Thai KV to build their database system. The structure of the database can change over time, requiring Thai CDT to adapt accordingly. Another challenge is striking the right balance between ordering and high throughputs. While maintaining the order of events is crucial for date integrity, we also need to handle the large volume of change without compromising the performance. Similarly, we face trade-off between consistency and low latency. Guarantee eventual consistency while minimize latency is a delicate task that will require careful consideration. Furthermore, Thai CDC needs to efficiently fetch data that is spread across multiple Thai KV nodes. This requires effective coordination and communication to ensure the seamless retrieval of data from various sources. Lastly, we aim to minimize operational comp complexity, as a complex system can introduce challenges in maintenance and troubleshooting. Now, let's talk about, let's take a closer look at how TICT addresses these challenges. Um, here is the overall system architecture of Thai CDC. Thai CDC talks directly to Thai KV, which allow for more streamlined communication and faster data transfer. Thai CDC capture change data by watching the change log of Thai KV, which provides a reliable and up-to-date source of information. The system is horizontal, horizontal scalable using table as the basic scheduling unit which allow for greater flexibility and ease of use. Additionally, Thai CDC provides an extendable downstream syncing interface, which can be easily customized to support different third-party downstream platforms. Currently, we officially support MySQL, Kafka, and Cloud Storage servers. But our flexible architecture allows for easy integration with other platforms in the future. Okay. Now let's take a closer look at the Thai CDC cluster internally. The Thai CDC cluster is composed of multiple capture server, each of which can be either an owner role or a processor role. The owner acts as the leader and the coordinator of the Thai CDC cluster, responsible for scheduling change feeds to different processor managers. Each processor manager manages many small sub-processors which serve as the base working unit of the Thai CDC cluster. After a change feed is scheduled to a processor manager, the manager will initialize and assign one processor to one table of the change feed. The processor will then start watching the change log of the table on the Thai KV and begin pushing change data to the downstream. When pushing a change feed, the owner will calculate the watermark of the overall change feed process based on the watermark of each individual table managed by each processor. The metadata of the change feed and the Thai CDC cluster itself will be stored in the PD cluster of the Thai KV, which is, an, you can treat it as an ETCD cluster. This process allows for efficient and reliable change data syncing, even in complex and large-scale environments. Notice that in the Thai CDC capture server, each server will always launch a processor manager to capture change data and push it downstream. However, only one server can act as the owner and the coordinator of the cluster at any given time. After the owner has been elected, we can start scheduling and dispatching tables to processors. The owner initializes a scheduler for each newly created change feed. The scheduler's primary function is to assign syncing tasks to different processor managers, with each syncing task mapping specific table. Once a processor manager receives a task, it initializes a new processor and begins syncing the corresponding table. During the syncing process, each processor initializes an agent that communicates with the coordinator to track and report on the syncing progress of the table. Now, we have introduced how Thai CDC as a cluster works from high level. Next, we can dig into the details and see how each processor works after being assigned task of syncing tables. Here is the topology of different components. The component topology of Thai CDC involves several key elements that work together to ensure accurate and efficient day syncing. 
Firstly, one change feed can be spread to multiple capture servers. Each capture server will initialize a new processor that is dedicated to handling the syncing task for the change feed. Inside each processor, a pipeline is created for each table, allowing for efficient syncing of individual, individual dataset. The owner of the change feed is responsible for syncing the DDL event, which is the data definition language event, to the downstream, such as table scheme update. While the processor pulls the DDL events, but is not responsible for pushing the DDL uh, DDL to the downstream. Instead, the processor applies the DDL schema to the mounter, which will deserialize the DML, which is the date manipulation language. Even later. This component topology ensures that PyCVC can handle large volume of data syncing tasks and maintain accuracy and efficient throughput throughout the whole process. Here is what happened inside a table pipeline. From the left to right, we have firstly the TyKV CDC subcomponent, which is a subcomponent embedded inside the TyKV, allow us to read the change log of the TyKV for any updates. TyKV provides interface allowing a client to watch the change log, which can be useful for building change data capture servers for any system built on TyKV. Next, the puller component connects to the TyKV CDC associated with the corresponding regions and watch all change events. When a change event occurs, it is sent to the puller. The puller streams the change event to the sorter, which sorts the event based on its timestamp. After sorting, the sorter push the event to the mounter. The mounter decode the key value entries into table format and sends them to the sinker. Finally, the sinker syncs the events to the user specified downstream location. We have talked about the Thai CDC syncs the DDL events. Next, let's talk about how the Thai CDC synchronizes the DML events. First, how the puller work. The puller is a critical component in Thai CDC state syncing process that is responsible for mounting for watching change events of a table and pulling them from the source database. As table in Thai KV can be split into multiple date region and stored in multiple Thai KV nodes, a puller will connect to multiple Thai KV nodes to watch all the related regions. Thai KV nodes push change events to a channel through the gRPC string and the puller creates a walker for each region, which periodically reads the change events from the input channel, and all region walker share an event channel that connects to the output channel. The output channel dispatch the change events to the DDL job puller and the puller node based on the event type. Next, next let's talk about the sorter. Why the sorter is required? Sorter provides two major functionalities. First, buffering the incoming events allows the sorter to smooth out the peak and the valleys of upstream data flow. This ensures that data syncing process is efficient and can handle large volume of data without becoming overwhelmed. Second, incoming events may not be in time order which can make it difficult to provide snapshot isolation or ensure eventual consistency if the system crash. The sorter ensures that the events are sorted based on their timestamp, allowing the processor to reconstruct the cluster snapshot correctly. Overall, the sorter is an essential component of Thai CDC, ensuring that the data syncing process is efficient, accurate, and consistent. So, how does sorter work internally? We use an external KV store, adopting the log structure merge tree. On the top, the memory buffer area is called map table. The writes from the foreground are initially sorted in the map table. When the buffer reaches its size limits, the data is flushed to the disk, forming SS table, which is the sorted stream table. All map table and the SS table are divided into multiple events. Levels. The layer that includes all MAM table and the SS table directly flushed from MAM table to the disk is called a level zero. As sorted, as sorted needed to sort incoming change events based on their timestamp, however, different disk files may have overlapping timestamp intervals for the same table. So 
an iterator needs to wrap to the merge sort these files when accessing them. Managing memory and disk files for hundreds of thousands of tables can be challenging. So multiple tables may share a fixed amount of memory buffer and then flush them out to disk together. This can result in file and disk having overlaps not only in timestamp but also in tables. To address this, the files can be periodically read, merged, sorted, and rewritten back to the disk. Once the event has been sorted, the mounter converts event with a timestamp smaller than DDL barrier into table row format. To do this accurately, the mounter requires knowledge of the corresponding table schema. Although the owner is responsible for pushing the DDL events to the downstream, the processor must also store the table schema to achieve the processor DDL puller retrieve the table schema from TIKV CDC components, filter out unnecessary information, and store the table schema in the processor schema storage for later use. Next, the sync component in TIE CDC is responsible for transferring change events to the downstream. Each change feed has a resource manager, a resource, a source manager that connects to the sorter of all tables associated with the feed. The sync manager periodically pulls the source manager, which retrieves events from all sorters and sends them to the sync manager. The sync manager then distributes the events to the corresponding table sync, which writes them to the designate downstream. TyCDC employs a pool-based sync to ensure efficient and uninterrupted event transfer. Push-based sync can result in block events on the sync, leading to performance degradation. TyCDC's pool-based approach can manage a large volume of data with precision and pre with precision and consistency, guaranteeing accuracy throughputs um, throughout the data synchronization process. So while TyCDC is theoretically horizontal scalable, certain performance issues such as high CPU utilization and the unexpected lag between the upstream and the downstream may still occur. We received feedback from users last year about the concerns of CDC's performance. In response, we have put significant efforts and time to optimize the performance of Thai CDC. So starting with 6.5, the throughput of Thai CDC has been improved by seven times. In the following section, we will discuss the approach that has been taken to enhance the performance of Thai CDC. First, let's check out some performance baseline of Thai CDC before 6.5. I put some old number here because I want you to have a more intuitive feeling of how much performance gain we have already achieved. The first case we consider is using Thai CDC to sync data between two TIDB clusters. The hardware specification of our Thai CDC node is 16 CPU and 64 GB of RAM, which was proven to be more than if sufficient for our case. Single table throughput with a big table, 1,200 bytes per row, is 80,000 writes QPS with a throughput of 120 megabytes per second. Even before 6.5, we found that Thai CDC is able to handle very large tables up to 30 to 40 terabytes in size, and the Thai CDC was, table, uh, was able to keep up with the throughput demands without any problems. And there are no limits to the amount of upstream cluster data that Thai CDC can handle. This means that as our data needs continue to grow, we can rely on Thai CDC to, ke to keep up with the increased demand. The second case we consider is using Thai CDC to sync data from TIDB to Kafka. Still, it is the old date before 6.5. The hardware specification are same as previous case, which is 16 CPU and 64 GB of RAM. When testing a single table throughput on a large table, still 1,200 bytes per row, we have achieved 35,000 writes QPS with a throughput of 52.8 megabytes per second. While this is slightly lower than our previous test with only two TIDB clusters, we have also found that Thai CDC is able to handle very large tables. We have test table up to 30 to 40 terabytes of in size, and Thai CDC was able to keep up with the throughput's demands without any issues.
So the throughput of the high CDC table pipeline is an essential performance matrix that measures the efficiency of each of its four consecutive subcomponents, the puller, sorter, mounter, and sink. This pipeline can be visualized as a water pipe, wherein the narrowest part determines the overall throughputs. So by measuring the throughputs of each component separately, we have identified that the sink is the bottleneck in most cases, which has the average throughput 76,000, while the sorter has the largest throughputs. Therefore, to improve the overall performance of high CDC, optimization efforts have been found focused on the sink, puller, and mounter. To optimize the performance of the puller in high CDC, several measures have been taken. Firstly, the processing of resolved timestamp has been optimized by processing them in batch which a resource timestamp you can treat it as the watermark. Reducing the time taken for the puller to calculate, this, this method helps us to reduce the time taken for the puller to calculate and advance the checkpoint. Secondly, we rewrite log have been implemented instead of using just exclusive log, enabling concurrent access to resource and increasing the efficiency. Lastly, the frontiers inspection of region split merge has been optimized to reduce the time taken for the puller to access the update data. An unnecessary memory allocation has also been removed, for the, which help us to further improve the puller's efficiency and reducing the overheads. Um, so the performers, so here is the, here is what we try, how we try to do the mounter improvement. So as you can remember that, mounter act as the deserializer decoder in our pipeline. So once it receives a DDR event or key value um, entry, it will try to decode it and uh, make it like a table format and send it to the next component. So in order to improve the throughput on the mounter, we try to use a decoder pool instead of just a single thread decoder to decode the key value events. So the performance of the sync components in Thai CDC has been significantly improved through the implementation of a pool-based sync, as I mentioned before in the previous slides, which helped to improve the management of the event flow, reducing the risk of data log on the sync. So we achieved the significant performance gains after applying aforementioned optimization. A comparison between Thai CDC 6.3 and Thai CDC 6.5 um, reviews after, uh, actually it's the version larger than 6.5, reviews a sub substantial increase in performance when a downstream is Kafka using different protocols. When using a kernel JSON protocol, the performance has improved from 5,000 per second to 41,000 per second. When using an open protocol, the performance has improved from 8,000 per second to 58,000 per second. And finally, when using the Avro protocol, the performance has improved from 9,000 per second to 63,000 per second. So specifically to address the checkpoint lag when syncing data to MySQL using Thai CDC, we apply a batch syncing approach. Um, rather than executing events one by one, events are now synced in batch, and multiple connections has been established between the MySQL sync and the downstream MySQL compatible database. So to measure the effective effectiveness of this measure, a sysbench workload has run with 500,000 rows per transaction. The results show that this measure have led to a significant reduction in the update and the delete lag by about 30%. And lastly, I would like to share some of the valuable lessons we have learned throughout the journey of building Thai CDC. The first lesson we have learned is to design the system architecture in a line with the upstream database. This means that when creating the data pipeline abstraction, we should closely align it with how the database organizes its data. Instead of focusing on adapting a system to Golan channel, we should prioritize the table pipeline approach. The second lesson is the importance of establishing clear boundaries between subcomponents. 
for a significant period, we lack precise regulation and scope for each subcomponent, making it challenging to optimize or enhance the system. Any change often requires modification in multiple places throughout the entire pipeline. Hence, defining clear boundaries is crucial for scalability and maintainability. Careful considerations should be also be taken into account when choosing between push model and pull model. Previously, we utilized the push model for sending data across the pipeline, which made it difficult to isolate each table pipeline. However, by, trans tra uh, by transferring to the pool-based sync, we gain more flexibility in supporting different downstream systems and efficiently syncing data from various tables. The third lesson involves implementing the old value features from the early stage of the development. In the initial version of high CDC, only put and delete events were synced due to performance concerns. However, we discovered the usefulness of the old value features in many scenarios. After months of struggle, we finally decided to implement the old value cache and fetch the old value from TyKV using historical snapshots. And then the final lesson resolved around uh, implementing an efficient sorter while considering con scalability. Initially, TyCDC using an in-memory sorter, which increased the risk of OOM, especially when dealing with large volume of changes in the upstream cluster. To eliminate this risk, we engaged in discussion and eventually adopt an LSMG-based DB sorter. This feature took approximately half a year to mature and was des designed with scalability in mind. All right, so that's all for today's talk. We are keep adding more features and optimizing the system. You can find details for advanced features like large table scale out, which will split the large table syncing process into multiple table pipeline in our official documentation. So here is the GitHub repository of TyCDC. Feel free to check out. If you have any questions or comments, just shoot me an email. Oh, OK. And also, you can scan the QR code and provide the feedback for this session. Thanks. Any questions, comments? Yeah. Um, could you use the microphone after you? Uh, I think you mentioned about uh, filtering capabilities initially when you're explaining the CD, uh, Thai CDC. Uh, where do you put the filtering part in that uh, architecture? The the filtering, right? Yeah, like if you the want to selectively get records. Correct. Yeah. That's a very good question. So the filtering part is very important because users usually have huge amount of tables. So, in, so to ensure that we are now going to transfer unused data from Thai KV to Thai CDC to downstream, we put the filter part on the Thai KV side. So from the very beginning of the pipeline, we are going to filter out all unnecessary events and the tables. And just one small follow-up. On the sorter, uh, is there some kind of a configuration as to how long that sorter waits for all the events to arrive from the change? Or how does it know like when to trigger a sorting? Uh, so your question is about, is there any configuration we can use to configure the trigger of the event pulling? Is that correct? No, no, you, you, you had that sorter component in the middle, right? You were saying that sometimes the events may not uh, arrive in the right order, and the sorter in the middle is going to reorder those events before it sends it to the sink. Uh -huh. So my question is that that sorter component in the middle, how long does it, how does it know that, you know, the, I see. This, this is the trigger at which uh, I'll have 100 records, for example, and I need to reorder them and send it through. Or is it a time-based threshold or is it a record-based threshold? Yeah, so I think that is, um, I don't remember the exact number of the frequency we trigger, but I believe that is configurable. Like we can, we can configure um, how frequently or how often we wanted to push the sorted events to the downstream, yeah.
I think that is configurable. I need to go back, double check the configuration file. But that is a very good question. Thanks. Hi, Chong Zok from Google. Uh, I have a question about the consistency, consistency guarantee part. So it looks like Thai CDC pulls um, uh, single row level changes mm -hmm. uh, from Thai KV, and you said it ensures eventual consistency. So does it mean that um, if there is a transaction that um, um, that involves multiple row, row changes, um, does the asset property is still guaranteed by Thai CDC? I, I don't think so. Currently, we do not support transaction level consistency. Yeah. Okay. So it's, 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 it's difficult to do, achieve that, right? Because, there is, uh, because the row or the data can be across multiple Thai, CD, Thai KV nodes. So we, will, we do not recommend user, like on a downstream database, you try to, you try to submit a transaction on the upstream database, and then you will receive the same kind of like transaction on a downstream database. Um, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, one more uh, quick question. So I just want to clarify the pooler's uh, working mechanism. So the pooler. Yeah, but, but one follow up is like, since yeah. our, oh, okay. when we're syncing the data to the downstream database, yeah. we are actually like submitting the MySQL um, events to the downstream database, right? So if we really wanted to implement a transaction consistency, that is achievable. So there is some price in the trade off is like, okay, if you wanted to do that, the throughput and the latency. The throughput can be the throughput can be low and the latency can be large. Yeah, I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, just so uh, one quick question mm -hmm. I had was uh, about the pullers working mechanism. So, mm -hmm. the the pullers pull the changes from the tight KV uh, periodically, or uh, I mean, not tight KV pushing changes to the pullers because the diagram looked like actually the the latter. So it's like the stream. So. Yeah. Thai KV have a change. So in, inside the Thai KV, we have a subcomponents that is watch the change log, right? When it receive events, it will sort of like uh, have a have a have a stream like push to the puller. Even though this one is called puller, but it is that is for Thai uh, Thai CDC itself. It looks like a puller, oh. but it's actually like receive the pushing events from the Thai KV internal components. Oh, so yeah. just Thai KV um, pushes those. Um the changes into, into the Correct, yeah. mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. it pulls from there. Okay, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Thank you. Any more questions? Great. So I guess that's all. Thank you. <laughs>